there is perhaps no detail as important to the identity of the modern woman as her hairstyle. If you've been anywhere near a television sometime during the last 25 years, then all I have to do is say the Rachel, and you'll instantly know that I'm not referring to the recently acquired mid-sized sailboat whose dazzlingly vivid airbrushed portrait of celebrity chef Rachel Ray caused quite the stir in Nantucket this summer, but rather the iconic hairstyle sported by Jennifer Aniston in the sitcom Friends. The depth and breadth of the Rachel's cultural impact cannot be overstated, as it swept through the chairs of every salon in America and around the world, and its legacy endures today as trend after trend is tested and tossed out by an increasingly fickle public. Was it a carefully designed strategic endeavor, or was this simple face-framing bouncy shag the product of happenstance? According to celebrity hairstylist Jean-Baptiste de Monte Cristo, the hairdo was inspired by an Avon saleswoman who was murdered in broad daylight in his hometown. He spent an entire week haunted by the image of her bubbly backlit silhouette until he decided to transfer the negative energy onto Miss Aniston's head, and the rest is history. The Rachel quickly spawned a legion of counterfeit wannabe styles like the much fuller Raquel, the slicked and sleek Ray Gel, and the hot dog nacho 10 minute dinner do companion coif, the Rachel, all of which swiftly vanished in the wake of what would become the hairstyling world's undisputed heir to the throne of iconic mononymous cuts, the Karen, which was actually just the Rachel, but with a scrunchie worn on the wrist. Though Hollywood stars and their high-paid stylists frantically attempt to create and cash in on the next big trend, it's evident that a truly groundbreaking signature style achieving icon status requires more dumb luck than calculation. As the need to brand and market oneself becomes more and more essential, stars and socialites are going to any lengths to stand out and make a name for themselves. For example, many critics blame the failure of Meg Ryan's career renaissance on a very ambitious and widely mocked attempt at reclaiming the 60s mushroom cut by adding a 24-inch rat tail. The tabloids and chat shows wasted no time in mercilessly flogging her as out of touch, insane, unhinged, and unbelievably fat, while she limped back into obscurity to regroup and try again. None of this has stifled John Q. Publix and Barbara Regular's botched attempts at branding length, volume, shape, and tone some of the key ingredients in the recipe for that elusive, truly outstanding and award-winning coiffure casserole. Scientists have estimated that the average woman age 18 to 40 will spend approximately six hours of each day in a state of mild to severe anxiety about what to do with her hair. From face framing layers to frosted tips, from bangs to balayage, ordinary women across the globe are plagued by the stress of seemingly innocuous personal style queries such as do blondes really have more fun? And if so, what's the fun differential on color temperature? Do yellow blondes have more or less fun than cool platinum ash blondes? And will this fun protect me at all against split ends and breakage? Can I just take a shortcut and put on a blonde wig? Is being a slut an essential feature of having more fun? Isn't that the clear subtext here? Like blondes are thought to be more desirable and more promiscuous, basically a guaranteed sure thing to all the men in the vicinity? What if I keep my brunette bob and just skip wearing panties? And so on. In short, it's a war zone out there. And by there, I'm talking about the battlefield of the woman's head. The natural look. I once lived with a 50-year-old woman named Gloria who covered her large driveway with oriental rugs. They were in various states of decomposition, stained and tattered by the New England weather, and of course, trod upon daily by her minivan. When I asked her about the rugs, she just gave me a confused look and changed the subject, choosing instead to direct my attention toward the large bramble she had built in her garden. I looked over at the enormous pile of sticks, branches, twigs, and other foresty detritus and thought, she paid someone to do this? And wondered why. <laughs> 